Hi, welcome to this introduction to how to use the Uniprot database to study evolutionary relationships and create phylogenetic trees. So we can use a database of genetic information to uh, understand the relationships between species. And in this case, we'll be looking at the relationship between bats and birds and uh, mammals. So uh, genetic information can come in a few types. We could look at DNA sequences. We know that DNA is a molecule that has a sequence of chemical bases, A's and T's and C's and G's. Uh, we, could also, we also know that that DNA is used to transcribe a different molecule called messenger RNA. So we could also look at RNA sequences. Uh, and then that RNA is used by the ribosomes of cells to assemble amino acids into proteins. So we could also look at the protein sequence, the amino acid sequences of a protein. And that's what we'll do in this case. We'll be looking at a protein called cytochrome B. Now, if we were to line up those sequences for a whole bunch of different species, it would be really difficult to analyze and tell which ones are more or less similar and which species might be more or less closely related. But the database will do that for us. The Unipro program is going to align all of those sequences for the species you choose and then determine uh, the phylogenetic tree and uh, similarity between the various species based on that data. So here's an example of a phylogenetic tree. Right? It's going to connect species together most closely if they're more, close, more similar and more closely related, meaning that they had a common ancestor uh, more recently. And then species that are more distantly connected had a more distant common ancestor farther back in the past. And this is the Unipro database. I'll walk you through the steps there in just a moment, but there are a couple of vocab things we should touch on. Uh, the phylogenetic tree is the diagram, and again, the program will make that for you based on the cytochrome B data that you're looking at. You could theoretically choose other proteins to look at as well and compare the trees, but we'll be doing this one for the purpose of, of comparing bats and birds and mammals. Common ancestor, this is that species that lived in the past. That's an ancestor of more than one species that lives today. So, um, you know, where those branches join together on the tree, that's the common ancestor. MTCYB and cytochrome B. MTCYB is the name of the gene that enc encodes the instructions for the cell to produce the cytochrome B protein. And cytochrome B is a good protein to look at because it's found in all eukaryotic cells. So that's cells of animals, plants, fungi, protists, basically everything except for bacteria and archaea have cytochrome B proteins. It's a protein that's found in the mitochondria of cells and helps with cellular respiration. Alignment is the term that we use for that side-by-side -side comparison of the sequences. So the program will line up the cytochrome B sequences for all the species you choose. And then it will calculate an identity. So identity is the degree of similarity, and it's expressed as a percent. So it'll say for all the species we're looking at, what percent similarity do they have? And again, from that, we infer their evolutionary relationships with uh, organisms that have a higher degree of similarity being more closely related uh, than uh, ones with a lower degree of similarity. So let's take a look at the database. Here we go. It's uniprot.org, U-N-I-P-R-O-T.org. And when you go there, it'll look like this. There's a search bar at the top, and I'm going to type MT hyphen CYB. It's really important as you use the database that you're careful about any typos and that you always double check your work so that you're looking at the correct data. So I'm going to click enter and it's going to bring up uh, the all of the cytochrome B data that it has in the system. So when I look here, I can see protein names. It all says cytochrome B. For gene names, it all says MT hyphen CYB and so forth. So this is all data that I could look at. Uh, up here on the right hand side says 1 to 25 of 1867. So there are almost 1900 different entries, different species for which they have the cytochrome B sequence data in this database. So I'm going to change show 25 to show 250. Since there's a lot of them, I want to see a lot on one page. Oh, there we go. And now I can start to look at the information. So the first line is humans. So this is the human cytochrome B sequence. And again, it has the name there and the gene. That all looks correct. Over here on the right-hand side, it has the length. So for humans, the cytochrome B protein is 380 amino acids long. It's important as you look at the database that you select uh, information that's the same for each species. So, you know, in this case, the length should be right around 380. And if you look down that column, you can see all of them are pretty close to that. If you had something that was like 200 or 17 or something, uh, that would not be good data to use because you would be comparing something different and it would mess up the whole analysis. So always important to double check for everything you choose. And now I can choose species. So if I'm comparing bats and birds and mammals, I need to choose some bats, some birds, and some mammals. 
and put them into my basket. So I can just scroll down the list and start checking things. So here's human, that's a mammal. Uh, let's see, grizzly bear, great. Uh, here's a bat, Pallas's long tongue bat. I'm gonna check that one. Uh, just going down, here's, here's another bat. Fruit eating bat, great. Uh, again, looking for some mammals and some birds as well. You know, I might choose, here's a dolphin. Um, here's a common raven, there's a bird. So as I check things, what I want to do is go up here. At the very top, there is a button to add to basket. So I'm gonna add them to the basket. And when I do that, a little icon will pop up by the species that shows it's been added to the basket. And also my basket over here on the right hand side, I can see that the little number seven has appeared. So I just added seven species to my basket. I can also search for specific things if I come over here and look on this bar where it says other organisms. So for example, if I wanted to find out if there were any owls in the database, let's say I need more birds for my analysis, I just type owl and it will bring up uh, a drop down that shows there's two different owls. There's a short-eared short -eared owl and the northern saw-wet owl. So I can click on short-eared owl and then go. And when I do that, it'll bring me to the data. Again, looks good. 380 is the length, MTCYB, cytochrome B. So I check that and add that to my basket. Uh, if you wanna look for more species, you just click the little X there and go back to the original screen. And again, I can look for you know whatever I want. So let's say I want to find a swan. Are there any swans in the in the database? Nope, there's no swans. What about a goose? Okay, there's something like a snow goose. I'm gonna go to that. And here it is. Now it says cytochrome B, MTCOV, but look at the length. It says 74, so that's no good. I can't use that one. That's the wrong length. It's some other kind of data. So I would have to, you know, click back and, and find something else. So let's say, um, Say, are there any hawks in here? Nope. Okay. Eagle. No. Okay. I'm just going to type bird. Lesser bird of paradise. Perfect. Okay. Click bill. Okay. 380. Everything looks good. So I will add that to my basket. So I have nine species in my basket and you know again I want to just make sure I have some mammals, some bats, and some birds in this case. I can open up the basket to see it and right here there's a button that says full view. Once I've selected all of the species that I want I'll go to the full view and again this allows me to double check that they all look the same. There we go. That looks all looks good. And now what I do is I click this box in the left corner it selects all the species and then I click align. So this is going to line up all of the uh, cytochrome B amino acid sequences for all of these species and then compare them. It's gonna look for places where they're all exactly the same, places where there are similarities between them and places where there are differences. Uh, as it runs, it should only take you know, 30 seconds to a minute at most. If it's running for several minutes, you'll want to refresh it and, and try again. So here's my results. You can see here's the amino acid sequences. Now the species are each listed with a row. So over here on the left is a little code for each species. And then the top row would be, for example, this first one, and then humans are the second row and so forth. Because the amino acid sequence is 380 amino acids long, uh, it you know, has to split it up into little sections. So again, it's gonna line it all up and you can take a screenshot of that and, and uh, add that to your template if you'd like. If I scroll down, now it's taken that data and created the phylogenetic tree. So this is the tree where it's going to show the relationships and how, how similar that these species are based on the cytochrome B data. Uh, you can see down here at the bottom, for example, these two are connected together on a kind of a longer branch, whereas the two right above them are connected more closely together. So those two are maybe more similar uh, to each other than these two are and so forth. And of course, if we go all the way back to the left, they're all connected. If I scroll down further, it's going to give me the identity. So right here, uh, it says identity is 50.394%. So if I'm comparing all the species at the same time, they're about 50% similarity. And uh, I can record that number if I would like. And then uh, it has my list of all of them again. So. You know, at this point, I've compared all of the species together, but now I might want to look at specific groups. For example, I might want to see how similar are just all the bats to each other. So I could come here into my list and I could click just on the bats that I've selected. There we go. And again, I could do an alignment. 
So it's going to now just compare the, these three bats that I have. It's going to put their sequences side by side and determine how similar. Now, I would anticipate that the bats are, you know, what I would predict is that the bats are going to be more closely related to each other than they are to things like birds or to mammals. Well, let's see what happens here. There we go. So there's my bat species. And again, gives me a little tree just for the bats. And then look at my identity, 92.348%. So if I'm just comparing these three bats, they're actually very, very similar to each other uh, relative to you know comparing all of the species. The other thing I want to look at right is how do bats compare to the mammals and how do pat bats compare to uh, birds. So I could come into this list and check all the bats and all of the mammals and just not check the birds at all. So there we go. And I could do an alignment there as well to find out you know how similar are they to the mammals and then I could also see how similar are they to the birds. And I would expect, you know, because bats themselves are mammals, even though they fly like birds, I might expect that the bats are going to be more similar to mammals than they are to uh, birds. But, you know, I don't really know that unless I have the data. So here we go. It's aligned the bats and the mammals, created a little tree here. And you'll see on that phylogenetic tree, it has the codes. So you have to look back at the list uh, in order to know which species are where on this tree and so that you can interpret it and come down here and again my identity is 68.947% so about 69% uh, comparing those and you know again I can click back and select various groups as needed so you know that's the basics of how to use the database the real key to it is to make sure that you know the species you select uh, you have the same data for each species in other words that you have cytochrome B that you have a sequence that's about the same length and that you're not comparing something from one species to something that's actually different from another species uh, and once you've done that you can choose you know whatever combinations you want in order to answer your scientific question so I hope that's helpful and if you need help please let your teacher know